So we've gone over how to optimize the class. Now let's put those ideas to the test and make an artificer following my advice, just to make sure that everything checks out. We begin by doing this. All of that had nothing to do with the class, so I skipped it. But for clarification, your skills for this build should have intelligence and strength on parity with each other, or at least the highest two, and then constitution, and then it doesn't matter. Dexterity, wisdom, and charisma are largely irrelevant. We're min-maxing here, optimizing, whatever you want to call it. With charisma likely being your absolute dump stat. Our guest's name is Tony Stank, and he is a goblin sage who discovered the secret to unlimited power in the form of his Ack Reactor 2.0, as he calls it. He named this after his brother, who he killed in an unfortunate incident with the Ack Reactor 1.0, named Postmortem. We got all of that from just our race and background, and now let's begin with the class. I think we should go to level 6 today, and I can just flash on screen the rest, but we don't need to track it. Those first few levels are where this class makes its biggest choices, and so those are where we're going to see if my strategies and synergies are the best way to build an artificer. Okay, so I skipped over the basics, and these are the guarantees, so to say. Everything here is what a level 1 artificer gets, hit points, dice, proficiencies, and the like. For this build, I chose Arcana and Investigation for my skills, Smith's Tools for my extra tool proficiency, a Dagger and Mace for my simple weapons, and using the optional rule in Tasha's, I grabbed Firearm proficiencies, as nowhere do they make more sense than with this class. Even if we may not use them today, they're always useful to have. At level 1, the only choice to make is what cantrips to take, but to know that, you must know what subclass you intend on taking, and what role in combat you plan on holding. So today, with obvious inspirations, being what they are, we're going to go armor eventually. And so here at level 1, let's plan for that. Eventually we'll get either a melee attack, or a ranged one. So deciding now, let's go with... Guardian. Since our stealth sucks anyways, and we have disadvantage from our armor, might as well be loud and tough, rather than average at stealth and weak. Knowing that, we should take a ranged attack cantrip, one that pulls people in close. Let's go with Lightning Lure. We could also go with Thorn Whip, but whatever. And then for our other one, let's, uh, that's a little harder to decide. You could argue for a damage dealing one or a utility one. I'm gonna go with Firebolt, but I don't really think there's a wrong choice here with your second cantrip, assuming you follow the same guidelines as your first and don't take like Thunderclap or Resistance. We could also fill out our first level spells and prepare these ones. At level 2, we get infusions, and since we're going to go armorer, let's play into that. We're going to take enhanced defense, repeating shot, replicate magic item, bag of holding, and then it's your choice of a homunculus or mind sharpener armor. We're going to activate the enhanced defense and the replicate magic item, I think, saving the repeating shot for level 5 when we get extra attack, and the other one is a... Uh, up to you. You could use Repeating Shot now and gain a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls, but you can't benefit from the loading property removal quite yet, so eh, is it worth it? Is it not? Who knows? At level three, we get the right tool for the job, like so. Also at level three, we're gonna sell our scale mail and our mace and buy a set of chain mail. This might not be necessary if your dex is good enough, but this build is not dex based. And you might be saying, but we don't have heavy armor proficiency, how are we going to use- Now we do. We also get another proficiency. You can see I chose alchemist supplies. Why? Because you can make your own potions. So why not? With this subclass, we chose the guardian armor type, which we decided on earlier, which gives us those abilities. And since we planned ahead, we already know that everything works together. We also get some spells, but whatever. At level four, we take the heavy armor master feat. That way you can ignore three damage from every physical hit. Alternatively, you could take an ability score improvement to raise your stats, prioritizing intelligence or strength. And looking ahead to level 6, as we had an opportunity to raise the other one, make sure to pick the lower of your two stats. You'll see why later. At level 5, we get extra attack and some more spells. And remember, you can now properly prep the repeating shot infusion to take two crossbow shots in one attack action. So now, you might actually want to do that. And at level 6, we can choose two new infusions and prep one of them. Depending on the ASI you took before, take either the Gauntlets of Ogre Power or the Headband of Intellect, as they raise either your strength or intelligence to 19 respectively. 
And for our other infusion, I don't know, let's, let's go with resistant armor. Though we're not going to prepare it right now. And then, like I said at the top, we're stopping here. But here is the rest of my plan for this build. And there you have it, a build made purely by following my instructions as written down, and I don't think it turned out too bad. What do you think? Be sure to comment down below the characters that you made by following my optimization video, and subscribe here as this is definitely a series that I will be continuing. Eventually, I hope I'll get to every class in the game. Also, make sure to go ahead and check out the Patreon, even if it's just to download the free homebrew pack that is there for everyone, as well as our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll get back to streaming live, I hope soon. But uh, I guess with that, we're done for today. So, have a good weekend, guys. Bye.